Today on the Transplant Helper, I'm going to be sharing with you exactly what it takes in order to be a great caregiver. On top of that, hopefully, exactly what it takes to maintain your sanity during that time. Hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to become part of the Transplant Helper community. Hey folks, welcome back to the Transplant Helper again today. My name is Jim Burrell. Now, there's no doubt in my mind that being a caregiver can be the most overwhelming, anxious, stressful, even scary time of your life. And oftentimes you're put in that position because you love someone or maybe you're their only option. And so being a caregiver and being a great caregiver is enormously important. And hopefully today's video will help you just a little bit with that. So let's jump right in again. These will be the five tips to help you be a great caregiver. And at the same time, maintain your sanity while you are doing it. Okay. So number one, first and foremost, you have to ask for help, okay? You have to ask for help. Even though you may be their primary caregiver, that does not imply that they may not sometimes need a secondary or a third dairy, is that a real word? But other caregivers as backups to give you some sort of break, okay? You have got to have some sort of break sometimes, and you're going to need extra help. Sometimes that includes having you and someone else there at the same time to take care of a certain situation. Other times it may be you stepping out for just a minute, maybe just to catch your breath or fresh air, maybe to run to the grocery store, other tasks, you need to ask for help. And more times than not in my life, again, I'm guilty of such, when I was the primary caregiver for my wife, the typical answer I would give when someone said, hey, how can I help? Let me know if I can help. I would say, ah, don't worry about it. I got it. And I would try to get it. And that was the wrong decision. When someone asks if they can help, you need to have a list already made up of tasks, of, of different things they can do that they can help. Don't be too prideful to ask for that. Just to look the person in the eye and say, look, I hate to do it. I love them. I care for them. I want to do this but I just need a break. I need you to cover for me. I would need you to take care of this, run, get that medicine, pick up those groceries, whatever. Ask for help. That is by far the number one thing you need to do. Number two, and a very close kin to that, you need to schedule time for you. I'm talking to you. You need to schedule time for you. Again, being a 24-7 caregiver can be tremendously overwhelming, and there are certain times when you're going to have to take care of you. And I mean by that, you run to the grocery store for your family, or you go out to the park for you, or you do something that you need to do. Maybe you've got doctor's appointments. Maybe you've got other places you need to be. You need to schedule time for you. And I think that really needs to be kind of a built-in thing. Again, if you can find that secondary uh, caregiver, someone can be that extra help, go ahead and pencil in every Monday or Tuesday or whatever day you pick out of the week, every day or two, put those down on the calendar and say, look, these are my days. These are the days when I do nothing else but take care of myself and I do what I need and try your best. I know it's impossible, but try your best to kind of block out the patient or the person that you're typically being that caregiver for and take time for you. That's extremely important. Number three, you ought to exercise, okay? Getting outdoors, exercising, doing any type of physical activity outside of the fact, yeah, I know you walked your legs to death running from the bedroom to the kitchen to take care of your patient, but getting real exercise, intentional exercise makes a tremendous difference in your mood, in the way that you feel. Sometimes physical pains can be alleviated by getting physical exercise. You need to do that because oftentimes what happens as caregivers is, is if you've got a patient who's laying in the bed or sitting in a recliner all day, guess exactly what you're most likely to do. Lay in a bed or sit in a recliner all day, watch TV. You're going to mess yourself up. You've got to stay active. You've got to stay moving. And that needs to be intentional. On top of that, if your patient is one like I was that was recovering and a part of their recovery process was actually getting that exercise as well, you can be a great motivator for them. Just say, hey, look, I'm going out for my walk or I'm going to cut up and down these halls a little bit in this house or this hospital. I'm going for my walk. Why don't you come go with me? And you can bring them along. You can encourage them and you'll be making a tremendous difference in their recovery while also taking care of yourself. Number four, and this is much more important than you probably think, but you need to be trying your best to join some type of family slash caregiver support group. Now, these things are all over Facebook. They're all over social media. Many of them, just that internet access can be tremendously helpful because a lot of times, mainly the thing we need is just to hear that somebody else is dealing with this, that you're not alone in this, that you're not the only one that's having struggles. That gives you an opportunity to meet these people in these groups, maybe private message them outside of the groups, 
attitudes. Maybe you'll make enough contact to make a phone call. Just get in communication with someone else who is doing this right now, and they can give you great advice. They may have tips and tricks and, and ideas that you've not thought of. They may have techniques and tactics that can help to maintain or care for your patient better, and you need to be a part of those support groups. On top of that, if you can get down to a physical support group, most of the time, most hospitals, most care centers have those, especially when you're dealing with, again, critically terminally ill patients or whatever, a transplant patient as well. Most of the time, those social workers back at the hospital or in clinic can put you in touch with some of these support groups, and they're absolutely great. I know from experience in dealing with my more local support group over UAB, the UAB Transplant Support Group, they're a huge help. They have uh, monthly meetings, I think. They do a lot of things together, some outside activities. Just gives that caregiver a time to relax and to feel as if they are not alone. And number five, this may be the most foreign to you, but you need to use humor when you can, okay? Now, I'm not talking about poking fun at your patient or your loved one. I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking about when things do arise that can be humorous, can be funny, go ahead and laugh, okay? I, I can't tell you the number of times when I was the one who was a patient, when I did something totally stupid, Sometimes because of the medication I was on, I just wasn't thinking straight. Maybe I said something that wasn't that bright. My wife just looked at me and laughed, and she wasn't doing that to be cruel. She wasn't doing that to be to be mean in any way. She was trying to encourage me to do the same. So just take time and, and use humor. Play around a little bit. Have some fun. Just because you're a caregiver doesn't mean you have to be a stiff, tied-up, strapped-up caregiver with, what do we call it, with a white face or whatever. You don't need to do that. You need to share yourself and share your humor. Try to to find humor in moments that can be a tremendous help it can not only improve your mood but also the mood of your patient and really can actually increase believe it or not can actually potentially increase the speed at which they recover so what does that mean you get to get out of here a little more quickly you may not have to care give for them for as long if you can help to get them better and humor can sometimes do that so as a recap, ask for help, schedule time for you, exercise, involve them in that, join a support group and use humor. I promise you that will help you to be a great caregiver and maintain your sanity. Stay stronger, my friends.